Hey everybody, welcome to What's New in Reaper 5.32. This came out on January 17th, 2017, and there are a ton of new features. As you can see here in the changelog, it's dominated by MIDI and notation. Uh, but in the audio side, there are two really nice new features that I want to focus on in this video. I'm hoping to collaborate soon with someone that is more involved with the MIDI side of Reaper, and uh, he can catch us up on all these changes that have been going on for the past year in the MIDI department. If you missed the last video, you can click right here. There's a link to the playlist for all these What's New in Reaper videos. There are so many tips, so many things that you may have missed. These videos are some of the most popular on the channel, so you don't want to miss them. What we're going to focus on today is the new Spectral Peaks option, which gives us colorful waveforms that gives us more information of what is on the audio file as well as the option for pre-fader track metering. And this is something that has been requested for years, and uh, a lot of people are really happy about this. OK, so here we are in Reaper. I'm going to import a couple clips, and I'm going to show you the Spectral Peaks option. Spectral Peaks, where can we find this option? How do we turn it on? There's a new option in the View menu, Peaks Display Settings. So we have this window here. We can just click this button to show Spectral Peaks. That does a quick analysis. A frequency and assigns it to a color. We can change this color by clicking and dragging here. We can change the noise threshold, which can help fine tune things. Uh, we can adjust this for different tasks as needed, change the variance of the colors, change the opacity, and we can change the gain. And this is the same as the shift up and down keyboard shortcut that's been in there forever. We now have this option here to change the display gain. This option is also in the Options menu, Show Spectral Peaks. If you've previously modified your Options menu or your View menu, remember to reset your menu or to just check what's new in the, the Options menu here. So you see the default menu here and Customize menu on this side. So Spectral Peaks, let's kind of set this to default. There's also an important menu. If you right click in this graph, you can load a preset, save a preset, reset the default, and then there's different spectrum options. So we can set this to full spectrum, uh, which is basically what we had already. Set this to the full spectrum for every four octaves, changes the color, it repeats the pattern. Uh, we can set this to two octaves, one octave. And for different tasks, we're going to choose different things. Uh, if you're working on sound design, it'd be totally different than if you're working on music mixing. So just experiment and see what you like. Why do we need this? What can we do with it? Okay, well, so let's turn off Spectral Peaks and zoom in on this drum loop. Without playing the file, it's a little hard to tell which uh, hits are the kick, the snare, the hi-hat. What do we have here? Okay, so that's pretty simple. We can kind of get used to that, but we have to play it to actually understand what we're hearing. Spectral peaks enabled. We can see that these two hits are the same. These green ones are the same sound. Similar sounds are going to have the same color. Right? So this is clearly that uh, rim shot snare, and this is the hi-hat. So that alone makes it easier to do things like cutting up samples, all right, so I'm going to grab this chromatic file, this chromatic notes. And you can see here, if you're editing samples, you can see which notes are which. And depending on your uh, settings for this, full spectrum or not, you can easily see which note is which um, if it's ascending in color spectrum and whatnot. Right? So the colors match the pitch, and it's easier to identify at a glance. The spectral peaks also work within the Media Explorer, and this is great. So if we're looking at uh, loops, we can just go through here. And they do work only with wave files, something to keep in mind. So if I find a Rex file, it's just going to have the regular black waveform. At this time, maybe they'll add that. 
I was editing guitars the other day, and where I found the Spectral Peaks option useful was for finding a good edit point for different takes on the same guitar part. So he's playing the same guitar part, and uh, the timing is just slightly off. And especially with distorted guitar tones, it's not always easy to see the transient or where the chords change. But with the Spectral Peaks option, and it made it a lot easier. There's actually like this red spot where I knew he was changing the chords, and I just put my crossfade uh, right at the start of it, and it worked perfectly. Okay, so here's a different project. It's a drum editing project. So I've got drums and I have guitars here. So guitars have a much different spectrum than drums, so they're going to appear as a different color. Within the drum group, it's a little easier to see that these purple tracks are your kick. So pink tracks, uh, pink waveforms for the snares. The hi-hat is uh, green. The snare top is green. And so brighter sounds are green in the spectrum. Purple is lower tones. Now let's look at the prefader metering option. So the way that metering has always worked in Reaper is that it comes after this fader. So if we make a volume change on this fader, it's going to turn down the meter as well. The meter shows what's after the plugin chain and after the fader levels. This new option puts the metering after the effects chain. Uh, to demonstrate that, let's just listen to this kick drum. Right? If I turn it down, the meter moves down as well. And if we turn on that option for pre-fader track metering, we see the original level that it was at uh, at the output of the EQ. So why is this important? Well, a lot of people like to have their track meters show what is coming into the fader, and then the output of the fader is on your buses or on your master. Also, a lot of people like to have their mixer full screen, and they may not see what is on the track, what's coming up, what's playing currently, say they have all the faders turned down on the drum mix, they won't know what is playing. They won't know that um, anything is on these tracks at all. So I'm going to turn that off, hit play. We don't know what the output of these tracks are. We don't know how hot they're hitting the fader, anything like that. Like these, these tracks, are they muted? Is there any audio there at all? We don't know. So we turn on this pre-fader track metering option. So with pre-fader metering on, we can press play. We can see uh, what levels are hitting the faders, um, what signal levels are going to be through our sends and such. One potential problem we can see is that like the snare uh, top and the kick out track are pretty hot. They could be turned down. So I'm going to open up re-Q, turn, or re-comp. I'll just turn this down by a couple dB. And I'll go to my EQ and also turn that down just a little bit. And now those tracks aren't clipping. So I'm going to reset my clips. And then we can build our drum mix. A lot of people have been asking for this. Uh, it's the way that they're used to working. It's the way that a lot of analog consoles work. And this should make a lot of people happy. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is that when you mute a track, you're not going to see anything on the meter because muting actually disables the track. So it kills all the processing. Items are offline. It's doing nothing. So muting the track will kill the meter as well. There are a lot more features. If you go to the Help menu, you can see the full change log right here or on the website. The user guide has also been updated. Uh, Jeffrey Francis does a great job keeping that up to date. And we're so thankful to have him as part of the community. So that's it for this video. Thanks a lot for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Support the Reaper blog through Patreon and visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials. <laughs>